I really have been so impressed with all of the changes you've been making in your life and I really wanted people to hear about your process and how you've integrated <clears throat> the energy tools and the work that we've been doing together. Where can we start <laughs> with what's been going okay, on? Okay, I wanted to start by saying that uh, the fact is that I worked with you about seven to eight years ago. Uh-huh. And then we had seven years of gap and then I started that again. Uh, and, and what made me come back was the realization that I wasn't ready to handle what you were about to give me seven years ago. Uh, seven years later, what has changed is just that my mental capacity to understand what does this work mean and what to expect. So the first thing, uh, what I wanted was clarity. Yes, uh, the answer to every single thing of my problem was spirituality because I was sick and tired of physically trying to fix things especially when you are performing in front of 50, 60, even 100 people. When we, when we met, you were a life coach and a, a yeah. trainer. So then you've made a transition. I think that's important because you're in front of people all the time, right? And you're, you're an entrepreneur, so you're building your own business. You've been developing it and, yeah. and expanding it. So you obviously had worked with many other coaches and trainers. You yeah. Know, and so what's, what was different? The way we work. See, be, being a coach, my I mean, seven years ago, being a coach myself and a trainer, uh, you know, you give advices to the problems that people bring in front of you, and that's what I was used to. And I guess that's why I came to you as well. But it was different because you didn't give me an advice, but you were just closing your eyes and giving me colors to imagine. <laughs> uh, oh, come on, that's oversimplifying it. <laughs> but. But here's the trick. I shouldn't have oversimplified it in my own mind because the way how it was working was it, it was working in much deeper level. Much deeper level where my emotions were coming out and I had to understand them. My transition at that moment was I always wanted to be an actor. I didn't want it to be a life coach. I didn't want it to be a personal trainer. And you did say at that point of time that I would be an actor, but it was too hard for me to believe. But then when I started doing stand-up comedy about four years ago, uh, everything that you said seven years ago made sense made sense to me four years ago. So that's like about three or four years later. <laughs> it's a little me, lag time, before. isn't it? We call that a time warp. <laughs> I would say it was my mental capacity okay. of understanding things. Uh, so when I started doing stand-up, uh, yes, I did well, but then what was frustrating was, see, when you're a coach or when you're a personal trainer, a lot of things in, is in your control uh, compared to stand-up comedy, where when you're going up on stage, nothing is in your control. The same set can make hundreds of people laugh, and sometimes the same set could, could not make even two people laugh, and that was really frustrating. Uh, I tried everything that was possible, but one day while I was meditating, I just realized that the only answer to this is is a mirror. Because in between, I did go to many people who call themselves as spiritual healers and stuff like that. I gave them the benefit of doubt. I said, okay, fine, I'm not going to judge you in the first go. Provide results, and I'm yours. It was hard. It was really hard. Because stand up is very important to me. Making people laugh is really important to me. And when something doesn't work, it's very frustrating. And that's when I came to you as a last resource. It's like if Amira can't do it, I gotta give up. It's either I give up comedy or Amira, you do something about it. We started about five months ago. And my presenting problem was, Amira, I don't know how to recreate the magic that once in a while I'm able to recreate on stage where people are connected. And I felt, when I came to you, what I felt was I was channeling, but I didn't know how to switch it on and switch it off using my will. It was like a malfunctioning faucet that the flow would either begin or it won't. Well, you gave me the master class to start with. I was still arguing with you, like, no, I want this, I want that, but I'm glad I was listening to you. And, I am oh too. boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy 
But I was prepared this time. I knew what to expect. I knew how to comprehend what was about to come. I remember you saying, Amira, this time around is very different. So when we yeah. worked together, you know, what was it, when I was first in Dubai or just in 2009, I think, and now this time you said it was very, very different. How is it different? Is it... It's my ability to comprehend what's happening. Before, you used to tell me this is what is happening. And, and see, the thing is, <clears throat> for me, how it works is like, first I listen to your meditation and then the deepest most emotions that I have been suppressing all my life comes out like as if I'm going to puke before I would panic because I expected to feel great the next day like once you do it I'll feel great the next day but the process was listen to your meditation something gets aggravated and it I have to process those emotions it has to come out of me and then the result was absolute peace I didn't want it something that was in the middle. I wanted the healing and the peace. I don't want the processing because I couldn't <laughs> handle it. This time, I knew what it was. It's like, if that happened somewhere back of my head, I would be like, this is good because it's just three, four, five days or six days and I'm going to feel great, but go through this, go through this. It's like working out. You work out, three, four days, you're going to have severe sore muscle but then you're going to feel great after the sore muscle has passed. So that was the process I understood. Right. And I like that analogy because, you know, but in, in terms of a physical body, we can, when we have that strength that we're building, we're starting to see our clothes fit different and, you know, we're stronger and we have more energy and we're more optimistic and we still go back for more, hopefully. Right? Yeah. But yeah, at yeah, least you have yeah. a tangible result. And with this process it's very difficult in times you know I, I haunt people or nag people what's different you know we've got to look for the little things sometimes that show up in in funny ways and may not appear like it's a direct relationship to the work we did but trying to look at what's different in terms of how we think, how we feel, how others interact with us, how we interact with others, how we sleep, how we eat, you know, all of those little things start building up to like a crescendo, you know, where there's like a huge climax and that's where we have our breakthrough, right? One thing for sure, I wouldn't have come back if the process didn't work. But like yourself, I've had other people do my program, you know, four and five times through. Every couple years, they do it again and they take themselves to a new threshold, right? Um, but right. there's other people that have done it one time and I don't know where they're at, quite honestly, because I haven't either, maybe they stay in touch with individual sessions, but it's not right. as revealing as what, let's say, you're describing because you've gone through the right. whole thing, you took a break, and you're, Manju, very conscious of your choices being a life coach and somebody that's quite active and, and really focused on themselves I think you have a good clarity of of what you're going through so I really appreciate that and that you're articulating it so well thank you uh, but the thing what I would say Amira is see for me the example would be I've had many people come to me and, and train uh, to lose weight or to, to shape up and everything but the truth of every weight loss is that it's a journey you don't watch a movie, you see Brad Pitt or someone in great shape, and then you come and say, you know what, in three months I'm going to diet, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to take the vitamins, and I'm going to shape up. It doesn't work like that. You change your lifestyle. You, you understand that there are certain sacrifices you have to do to bring that transformation, and not everyone's going to transform that way. But to start with your work, what helped me was the vision, the vision that I wanted to be there, and uh, this is the process that's going to bring me there. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes to reach that goal. And it's not going to happen with one session, two session, three session, or even one whole package. you got to hammer it, hammer it, hammer it till you reach there. Trust in the process. And I think that's what happens to most of the people, and I don't blame them, that because their vision is not clear, what they want. Is that what they want? Are they hungry about it? If you're hungry about it, the process, the pain that, or the pleasure that comes with this process won't bother you as much. But you didn't believe that you could have the outcome that you wanted. No, I didn't. 
but I was hungry. I wanted it, but I didn't believe it. Uh, and you know what? Let me let me get to the bottom of this whole thing since I started this program with you. Uh, it's been four months. So we we did about like when since we, we reconnected, September, right? Yeah. October, October, yeah. November, December, Jan, right. Feb. Now it's five months. In this five months, I know I will be where I want to be. And five months ago, I wasn't. And, and it's not something that I'm saying it from, from my brain, but the feeling, what, what I really wanted was, can my soul say that? Can something that deeper down inside say that, no, Manji, you will reach your goal of being a comedian or, or even getting into the movies. Can you do that? And for me, that is the greatest asset. It's like a beingness. Is your aligned with your soul's purpose and your authentic self. It's not in your head. It's not what somebody else programmed to you to say that you wanted or to think because Brad Pitt is successful, you could be too. Or let's pick somebody like John Abraham. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you've got more like the coloring of John. (laughs) Um, But the funny thing is... I don't think you would be happy, but fair enough. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's a nice comparable, I think. Um, Yeah, And, and so you're owning it. You know, that's the whole difference. It's an integration that yeah. just doesn't come from thinking and doing mantras and affirmations. It just doesn't happen. It makes me crazy when people say, I'm going to do my affirmations and I'll be, I'll be there, you know. <sighs> See, I, I, you know, uh, more power to those people who say that mantras will work in anything. But have you reached your goal? That's the thing, you know. Do whatever you want, but are you reaching closer to your goal or further to your goal? For me, I would do anything that would even take me quarter of an inch to reach my goal. And this has been helping me not only quarter of an inch, but quite leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. See, especially in, in, in art industry, uh, you have people who will fuck with your mind in a fraction of a second, whether you do good or bad. And if, if the voice that, you know what, you're good, it doesn't come from the soul, you go mental. Yeah. And I've had those nights that I do great, and there will be 50 people coming and saying, Manji, you killed it. And just one person would say that, nah, and I'll lose my sleep. Because my brain cannot comprehend how could he not like my joke. But the moment after doing this work, the voice comes from the soul, I've had a person, and this never happened to me, while I was on the mic, everyone are laughing, one drunk fucker wake, gets up all of a sudden, you are shit. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, okay? It's funny the way and you say it. I didn't tell it. you what I told him. I, I didn't tell you what I told him. It's like when he said, ah, sh- you are shit. I said, yeah, that's what your wife said after sleeping with you. <laughs> that wouldn't come out of my mouth. That wouldn't come out of my mouth. But somewhere the strength in my soul bought those words and just blurted it out. And I felt good. I felt good that I, I'm like, yeah, this well, he, is who I am. And he really got what he deserved, didn't he? Yeah, he's like, my wife is going to kick your ass. It's like, fine, she's tired of kicking your ass, so she's going to kick my, my ass. Fair enough. <laughs> That's funny. So, that that moment I just realized, you know what, people talk about confidence and there's so many videos on YouTube about confidence. But I believe after this work, confidence should come from your soul, not from your brain. Because I see a lot of people in the industry when they go up on stage, they try to fake confident by learning all those techniques. It shows people sense it that you are trying hard to be confident. But when it comes from your soul, people just find it charismatic. I think that's the difference between charismatic and I don't know what's the opposite of non-charismatic. Well, I call it being present and being centered and authentic is another word, right? When you're in alignment, again, you know, it's hard to articulate or really translate what that means when the soul and the body or the mind are all in alignment. And you're describing it so perfectly. It's like you're, you're in a flow and you don't sound fake. You know, you sound right. real, and you're also, I like to say, you're channeling. You're open to that flow, whether it's its not in your head mental. It's a flow of channeling, of 
of being connected to your higher self, um, feeling and sensing the energy around you, um, you know, being able to respond in, in an appropriate way for the crowd in that moment, you know, might not be appropriate for right. my crowd or somebody listening to this, but certainly in the moment where you were at, it was perfect. You were spot on. Right. And you got all those 50 attaboys when you came off the stage. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, for the first time, people hugged me and they said that you were amazing. It's like, wow. There were times that I really rehearsed. I would go up on stage, make people laugh. And trust me, not even a single person would come. And maybe they wouldn't even look into my eyes. They would be like, good job, and just walk off. <laughs> that night, after kicking that baldy's ass, I had people literally hugging me <laughs> and saying that you were amazing. And, and I think that's the greatest gift. Um, an artist could get at that very moment because we all are kind of craving for that, right? And again and again, it would be unfair if I don't if I if I don't give the credit ninety percent to the work that I did with you, and I'm still doing it, and I can't stop. Yeah, uh, it's not that I'm addicted to it or whatever. The results are real, and I can't stop. That's fantastic. I really love hearing that, of course. Um, you know, that's the whole reason I do this work, Manju. You know, I, I can't say that there's not some dark nights of the soul that I go through, you know, and wondering how people are processing this. And I really adore you because you have just really embraced the work and taken it and owned it. And more than anything, what you're doing is you're shining like a star that you are on stage. You know, and you can't yeah. fake that stuff. And, and it's going to be with you all the time. It's not something you learn in a book. You know, you found your voice. That's what this is all about, that alignment and being able to fully express yourself. You know, I talk about right. the chakras in our work and we're processing and clearing the chakras. Well, having that fifth chakra clear, not only are you able to focus and see where you want to go and what you want to create, you're also sending out messages to your audience. You're sending messages to your group, your tribe. And we're also receiving information on validation for who we are, you know, in terms of what right. you said in confidence. Right? That's where right. we're, we're sending these signals like radio waves constantly, picking up and sending. And so, you know, that's kind of an esoteric description of what happens when we get into alignment. All of our systems are on fire, you know, perfectly in, right. in synchronistic uh, flow. And uh, it's, very, it's very fulfilling. It's, it's, it's a thrill for me to watch you. And uh, I can't wait to go to Dubai and see you on stage. <laughs> Somewhere deep down inside me, for all that uh, the childhood traumas and sexual abuses that had happened to me, I just understood how powerful an individual can be if he, uh, deep down inside, believes that he doesn't deserve the kind of blessing that that is being bestowed upon him. And I had to remove that myself. No one was going to come and do that for me. Yes, your meditations are powerful and anything, but... I have to sit there and do that and ask you to help me pull that thing out. For me, this work is like the salt in the food. Uh, you can put all the, the spices and the right amount of temperature and the meat and whatever, but without the salt, the food is, it's bland. It won't work. Yeah. might feed you hunger, but it's not going to make you enjoy the food. So that was different this time. I understood that without this, no matter whatever you do, you might get those results by 20, 30 percent, if you're lucky, 50 percent, but not 100 percent. And this time, I'm getting it 100 percent. You know, I, there's a lot of coaches and mentors and people offering programs and different packages and things online. Um, have you ever purchased any of those or, you know, downloaded anything and, you know, you don't really have interaction with the coach per se, you just do their program? Have you ever done anything like that? I've done Joe Vitale, I, I even forgot the woman's name, I've done that, uh, I've done Feng Shui, I've done astrological reading from different people, uh, I've hired life coaches, uh, what else have I done? Oh, Reiki Masters, Theta Healing, uh, Past Life Regression, an Ashram, Hypnotherapy, 
uh, an ashram that I can't name it because then they'll come and kick my ass. Uh, so, oh my lord, just while talking, I just realized that I've spent about nearly 300,000 dirhams. Oh, wow. And I was in debt. That's like a thousand, uh, that's like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, Canadian, maybe, yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, and, and the, the frustrating point was, you know what, take my money. Uh, take my left arm. It's fine. Give me the results. Uh, uh, you can take my life. I mean, you can take my money. I'll make it back. Uh, but don't take my, my hope away. And when you're selling me garbage and shit, you're taking my hope away. The only thing that I'm sustaining to, to survive the, uh, the issues that I'm going through is hope that this is real. This will work. I'll give you more money, but please make it real. Don't fool me. And for 300,000 dirhams and four and a half years, I've been sold garbage. Just pure garbage. And again, I'll tell you, if something that saved me is your work, not anyone else, but your work. Yes, I wasn't in the frame of mind to handle it. And that's the reality. You go to a personal trainer, he will kick your ass, but at the end of the day, you will see result. The personal trainer who's going to kiss your ass and say that you're a sweetheart, you're going to remain fat or out of shape for the rest of your life. Or, you just, down, feel good. or just download this or stick your food in the microwave and all of a sudden, presto, it'll come out as a, you know, baked cake. It's not going to happen. It was <laughs> hopeless. That's the most frustrating part. It was really hopeless. Wow, I, I, I'm, I'm so touched, Manju. Um, I'm in gratitude for you. That one, you've realized that there is a lot of noise out there and there is a lot of unscrupulous marketers. Years ago, it was in 08, where I had the vision, you know, I was asking what was 2012 all about and, and my guide said to me, <clears throat> you know, imagine today you're a caterpillar and tomorrow you're a butterfly. So I pondered that, and I still ponder that. You know, what would that experience be like? Translate it to a human experience. But more than that, the being said to me, my guide said to me, and beware, there will be many charlatans among you. And that often comes to mind, you know, because there's a lot of slick marketers out there and people with deep pockets and big budgets, and that seduces people. In yours, the only thing that I could say is that it's not just a meditation. That is what spiritual work is. It's beyond body. There's something that you do, whether you call it vortexy. I'm not equipped to, to explain it technically, but it does it's something. Magic. And I've, That's I've, what it is. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to use the word magic. I want to explain to people because you know why I want to explain to people? It's because of those fucktards out there selling out fake programs and shit that I reached to a point where I couldn't even go to my mother's funeral. Oh. That's how shit it is. I was sitting there and I had I was on phone and and I was telling my mother to leave her body and she wouldn't leave her body. She... I'm sorry. Oh, fuck, I ate curry and I just touched my eyes. Damn it, oh. my eyes are burning as well. <laughs> fuck. You're an Indian. There's curry everywhere. <laughs> no, I, I really want people to know is that, you know what? Sell fake rice. I don't fucking care. Uh, sell fake books. I don't care. But when you are in this business, don't do it. Because the repercussions of it, it's painful. People trust you. There are three professions who needs to be honest. That is a guru, a doctor, and a fucking lawyer. Because you're saving lives. So just because you feed your fucking ego, don't sell fake product. Because people make decisions based on what you're saying. And, and have some conscience. That's all I would say. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different levels of consciousness out there. And... Um... 
and people and you know I, I asked myself this question over and over for years and it's it's like you know I was tricked too into products and people different leaders and who've sold me down the you know the road and I think the whole point of all that is we have to learn we have to discover who's real and who isn't that's part of the spiritual journey of awakening you know to to know what truth is and to know what resonates and to be able to trust that little intuition so i you know that's all part of what we discover in this process isn't it right. is, is being able to trust right. that and and you just look so much more aligned with that whole you know your intuitive self and i think last time you when you called me you said amira i want to start the training again but this is what i want i want to i want to be able to connect with my own magic on stage turn it on and turn it off right yeah so yeah how are we doing with that 90 percent, i'm there it's it's 90 percent in my control 10 percent, yes i'm still trying to figure it out yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's an ongoing process, but ninety percent, uh, I'm there, and that's the biggest gift I could get. And you can't put a price on that. That's uh, fantastic. I remember you saying to me, Amira, they're asking me, how do I do it? You know, they're noticing. I'll the tell changes. you the best compliment I got. Uh, here's a comedian who's been doing it for seventeen years in New York. Uh -huh. uh, so I had to go before him, and that's how I started my this year. I was shit scared before going on stage because last year I closed pretty bad and not because of uh, any reason. I met a guy that I shouldn't, I captured his energy, I went blank on stage. So I was petrified before I went on stage this year. It was my first ever show. I go there, boom, the magic begins and I end so high that he walks back I mean, the, the guy who's supposed to headline. Again, 17 years of experience in New York City, the guy's a pro. And I've been doing this for, the just, four, for just four, four years. He gets on stage, and the first thing that he says is, well, all I want to say is, fuck you, Manju, for doing so good. <laughs> That's the best ever compliment that you can get from a pro. That's great. And, you stole his thunder, yeah, and, basically. Not once. That happened thrice already this year. Oh, fantastic. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can't say flowery words. I can't say it in the rosy way that would, would explain this work. But all I could say is, listen, if you, I can only compare it to personal training. And I... I I used to be a trainer and now I have a trainer to train me and 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 the philosophy is the if you want real results something that is going to ground you it's not going to be a walk on rose path it is going to hurt you it is going to like there is going to be some sore muscles down the line you have to grow some balls and be okay with experiencing that. You just cannot say, like, the, I did that mistake too. It's like, Amira, do the two pointer. Uh, I expect it to feel great, right? It's uh, the special touch, the Amira touch. Yeah. But the middle process, you need to grow some balls to go through that middle process. And if you don't have the bandwidth to grow that balls, stop blaming the process, blame yourself. Not doing it. Uh, it's not the work. Yeah. It's not the work. Well, everybody has slightly different experiences, and so some people are a little bit more streamlined than others, and some of us, we like to resist things and do it our way, so the more we resist, the more it persists. So, you know, it's kind of like that. So, well, Manju, yeah, I, swear, uh, I cried, and I don't know what else I did in this thing. Yeah. It's all, it, when we come out of the other side, it's, it's, it's exciting, isn't it? It's very, uh, it's truly very exciting. So congratulations on all of your you. excitement and all of your accomplishments. And there's so much more to come. I think that's just the most amazing part is you've, you know, sort of recreated yourself and 
God only knows what's next for you. You know, it's when you change your mind and you decide you want something more or something different, you've got all the tools and all the resources within to create and manifest it. That's what's really hey, Mira, cool. I, I always I want to say that, you know what, it's, it's not all me, man. I mean, thanks for putting up with my stupidity and, and my craziness at times. And I, you know what, I know it takes a toll on you when you're working on me or but the amount of shit that I bring in from outside and, and I just dump it on you and you're cleaning it so you know what you're just being humble and kind and, and nice but I would say that you do you made the job easier for me you do all the cleaning you do all the for me if I could pay and and someone's doing such an amount of intense work of cleaning my irresponsible garbages hats off to you so thank you and and you fuck, you've been doing this for so long, so... If I was you, I would have given up. I kind of gave up as well. I was like, I'm done with this shit. I ain't doing it anymore, but you're persistent. I don't know what keeps you going, but hats off to you, seriously. Thank you so much. It's been 20 years this year that I've been doing this work, and uh, I've had many times where I really wanted to quit, and I don't really share that with many people um, because it is sort of a secret... Um, sort of place that I just don't share and the reason is is I don't want you to know the pain you know it's not about me right, it is about your growth and I have my own and believe me as a teacher and a healer um, the, the growth periods are even more intense than you can imagine and keep going well what keeps me going is people like you that are rising stars and I watch you I, I feel like you're my kid you know, I want to go out there and cheer for you and the audience and everybody else that I work with. It's the same thing. And uh, what what really hurts me is when people don't share their excitement with me. That's all. You know, that's that's their journey. And um, so that's what keeps me going, Manju, is the miracles. And it's it's truly so rewarding and so fulfilling. And at the end of the day, whether I never heard from you or not, I know it's life changing and I have to truly just know that and let go of it and not be attached to it's my work, right? It's not my work. It's divine work. It's, it's sort of a collective work. It's as you bring up your vibration and other people in your environment and people around me, we're all bringing up a vibration and it's changing things. I'm sure you can see as a, as a life coach how much many more people are awake than let's say five years ago. Yeah. You know, and so of I, course. I, my job and, and my request to you and others listening to this is to share this work and share the tools and, and, um, and, you know, invite people to have the experience. So thank you for being available and, and sharing your heart and sharing your growth and your miracles and your radiance. I wanted to do it. Uh, more than th thanking me, I would say thank you because I wanted to do it. I just, I was feeling heavy on my chest and I was like, you know what? I haven't done justice to this work. What's that? Hang loose? <laughs> no. It's, this is I. Yeah. This is, this is love. Oh. And this is you. <laughs> All right. oh, Get I updated, know. Amira. <laughs> Thank you. I need my kids to train me, you know. <laughs> okay, so I uh, love love you. You. Oh, okay. <laughs>